We're underway with Greg Alexander. The Auckland Warriors running from right to left. And Langer it is with a first touch now for Willie Kahn up to the 20. And Andy Platt, the first man in there to make the tackle. Sideru also. Gavin Allen goes centre field. Taken high in the tackle that time of Stephen Kearney. They're 25 metres out from their own line. And the Broncos hoping to do what they did way back in round one of this year. When they defeated the Warriors, what was the kickoff to the 1995 Winfield Cup? It was a big night, that one at Ericsson Stadium. But the Broncos were the team that walked away with the two competition points. So much has happened, though, since then. Five tackles up now for the Brisbane side, and O'Neill with a first kick. This one angled across for Kerwin's wing. Back on his own 10-metre line. A cluster of Broncos defenders there, headed by Smith and Carr. Very solid set of six there from the Broncos. The Warriors look to go wide through Sean Hoppy inside their own danger territory. One thing the Warriors have done well in games where they played quite well has started in a good fashion. Generally got the first points on the board. Even last week when they went down to the Raiders, they still managed to score the first try through Hoppy. Well, already problems here, Peter Ryan. Coming from the field, dreadful news for the Bro Brisbane Broncos. Down to 12 men just at the moment. Wendell Saylor is about to come on as we have a drop ball, but the first penalty goes the way of the Warriors. Well, the Broncos just 15 metres out from the line. You can make that 12 and now make it five as Lazarus drops the shoulder into the defensive line just a couple of metres short. Kearney was forced to make the front on tackle. They're spread out on the right. Dummy from Madison. Another man playing his last match here today at ANZ Stadium. Of course, hoping to still be playing in four weeks' time come the grand final. Got a very big, deep back line set, the Brisbane side. They've taken three before looking to go there. They go to Langer. Langer feeds it on for Kevin Walters. Sailor was a decoy. Renner shows the ball on the outside and says good night and scores. Steve Renner, half a gap and he was through. And the Broncos have started in devastating fashion at 4-0. Well, an awful missed tackle there by... Tierra party on Steve Renoff has given the pearl an easy run to the line. The cutout pass put the defence in two minds, but Renoff just getting outside Rapati gives him the fend. The first real attack, and of course we go back to the mistake made by the Warriors when they were awarded, awarded the penalty and then came up with a botched play before they'd even started their set of six. And Steve Renoff, his first touch, sees his 12th try of the season. Renoff, a player that, if Brisbane is to make it through to the grand final, he really is the ace in the pack. One of the stars of their very first grand final success in 92. Who will ever forget his 90-metre try against the Dragons. And of course, a season that's been interrupted again by injury. They didn't really set up particularly well, the Warriors' defence there. The, the Brisbane side put a lot of players out in their back line. When they finally went there, they did seem to have two or three extra players out there. So the Warriors weren't prepared to sp spread too well in defence, and it has cost them. And Neil then has this kick, five metres in from touch. He's taken it back 22 metres. Leading point scorer in a season in the history of the Brisbane Broncos, and he's achieved that record just a few weeks ago. Sitting on 177 for the season. First kick of the day for O'Neill. It's coming back. Not enough. Just misses. But the Broncos, they jump out of the boxes. They lead 4-0. So the Broncos from the scrum. 30 metres out. And again, O'Neill with a jink. He ran that time into Alexander. And forced back in the tackle. It did take some work there. An assist from Namu. Now Smith runs straight. Probably thinking he could have caught Namu offside. He wasn't standing square a second marker. Allen the blind side. They stood back and waited. Betts makes the tackle on the 10-metre line. I haven't seen the Broncos start this well for many, many weeks. Inside ball from Smith to Kahn. Kahn still 10 metres out. Away from Bell. Kerwin with a wrestling match. Gets his opposite to ground. And the Warriors are forced back to their own goal line. Langer, then to Wendell Saylor. Flat pass Saylor. Saylor scores. I'm prepared to give the benefit of the doubt. It's the second try to the Broncos, and it goes to Wendell Saylor. Well, there's no appealing for the Auckland Warriors for a forward pass. Wendell Saylor taking the short ball off Alan Langer's hip. And well, it 
It's a bad angle, but I thought there was some doubt about the pass. Andy Platt couldn't hold on to Sailor. A strong burst. Sailor coming into the game. Matter of seconds. To Peter Ryan left the field. No, from that angle, it looked fine. Some ordinary defence there. They've had to do a lot of tackling, and eventually they've cracked. Wendell Sailor. Is there any more popular player? They've got some stars, but Sailor is a hero. He's appeared in all 22 matches this season. And in fact, was man of the match last weekend in the match against the Seagulls at Seagull Stadium. Fine-tuning their game right now for the quarterfinals. If they win here, they have a quarterfinal in Brisbane next Saturday night. It'll be played at Suncorp Stadium. And their opponents, one would suspect, is going to be the Canberra Raiders. Peter Ryan on the sideline, replaced after just a minute of this match. And O'Neill from right in front. And this for a 10-point lead. No trouble with this one, surely. Julian O'Neill, there it is. The extra points. The Broncos giving it to the Auckland Warriors. All sorts of trouble. 10 points to nil. Another chance now with Alexander. There is an overlap here. Namu then for Kerwin. Kerwin turns them inside. Betts is on the wraparound. He got away from one and wrapped up by Khan. Good counter-attack from the Warriors. 35 metres out from the line. Namu inside then for Jones. Jones flung to ground by Walters. Back for Betts. Now Kerwin. He gave a little fend to Stacey Jones to get out of his way. And the Warriors now with Alexander. High ball now for Hancock's wing. O'Neill getting across, a mix-up between the Broncos, but they've come down with the ball, Julian O'Neill. A great take from the fullback. Never took his eyes off it. Lazarus lining up, first ruck, the first man off the ruck to take it up. As Alexander, pinpoint accuracy. Great fly there, Hancock and O'Neill colliding. O'Neill coming up with the ball. Hancock has had a few troubles. The Gold Coast pinpointed him as the target last week we'll get back to that as Madison charges up to halfway now it's Renoff the race is on Renoff and Hoppy he pushes away from Hoppy Renoff scores great stuff from the Broncos Steve Renoff gets the try and they lead by 14 nil Steve Renoff gets his second try but it was all set up from a beautiful pass from Alan Langer he's been out for Side to Steve Renoff. Appeared to be covered by Sean Hoppy, who went high, but again the strength of Renoff to the four to push off the winger and get his second. Terry Madison was the player who ran into the gap off the Alan Langer pass and he positioned his support players beautifully. The angle back from Steve Renoff. Big fend. 14 nil lead, about to be 16. Renoff, he, he did seem to springboard away from Sean Hoppy. Gave him the momentum to get to the try line. A little stagger just short of the line as he regained his balance. I ask the question, is there any better side in rugby league than Steve Renoff? Getting the ball on the halfway mark and scoring. I think Nobby Clark will pull done running 15 metres to score. Up there with it. A few years back, Bruce Gibbs in full flight. It was a great sight. Double change about to happen for the Warriors. O'Neill again, not a hard kick. Just 11 out and just a few metres off centre. The Warriors every right to be shell-shocked right now. Oh, it's a carve up at the moment. The Broncos, two from three for O'Neill, and a 16 0 scoreline here at ANZ. Alexander. 
Restart for the Auckland Warriors in what is shaping as a, a long, long day for them. They had high expectations and they're watching their finals hopes perhaps go right out the window. Well, that was the big plus for them, Andrew, was coming into this game. Their destiny was in their own hands. They didn't have to rely on anybody else's result but their own performance here this afternoon. A win would see them in the top eight. But it's their opposition that have come out firing on all cylinders. Brisbane in this vein, in this manner, they can run up any amount of points. Double change in the Warriors side has happened with Gavin Hill and Logan Edwards on. 28 and 32, the respective jumpers there away again. Can up over the 20, he's got no support now and a rise oh. on cue. And it's that man again, Steve Renault. Patrick to the pearl. Well, Alan Cairn, we mentioned how important his performance was this afternoon. A storming run straight over the top of Stacey Jones. A little step, bang, straight through, got good speed. Stacey Jones has to come again from behind to try and affect the tackle after Namu came up with an ordinary attempt. And then a little spin and turn and ran off number three. By Terry Lamb, always there. Very strong run here from Alan Cairn. Put the head down. Blackmore in the background, trying to stay with the outside men. Namu, an ordinary attempt. Stacey Jones going low, couldn't wrap the football up, and Steve Renoff, an easy catch. 10-metre run to get his third. Well, Renoff, what more do you say about him? He's in rare form. If the gaps are created, the work from the inside men, he'll support all day. O'Neill can just about use the same sand mound for his last three kicks. Again from adjacent to the post. The season tally to 181, make that 183. And the way he's going, he might have the double turn up by full time. The Broncos, 22, the Warriors nil. The Broncos really scoring at a point a minute here. They've got to arrest that before half time and go in with some chance in the second half. Means they need to score points quickly. At ANZ Stadium, the Broncos have reserved their very best for the last match of the season. As Wendell Saylor from the kickoff, that was good defence. The first man there, a determined chase from Gavin Hill. They had won their last five matches coming into today, but I've got to say this is, I think, fair in saying 30 or 40 percent improvement on anything I've seen over that period of time. And even early in this game, we look at the statistics and see that. Auckland, 16 missed tackles up against four. That's why they're trailing. But the reason that they've come up with so many missed tackles is they've handed the football across and given the Broncos enough possession to win this game early in the match. They play the ball. Didn't allow Kerrod Walters to do a whole lot from dummy half. It is the last tackle for Brisbane. And Langer, he kicks straight down the field this time and forced all the way back is Namu. Langer leads the chase downtown. He puts his teammates on side and they make the tackle. Kerrod Walters was there. And if the Broncos weren't ready for semi-final football or quarter-final football as it's now known leading into this week, well, they sure are now. And there won't be much of the 7-2 to, to win the comp around tomorrow if they keep this up for the 80 minutes. As the Warriors with Bell trying to ignite something on the outside. Rapati to Kerwin. Swarming defence over the top. Darren Smith. An assist there from Willie Carr. The Warriors again. Bell feeding the pass on. Oh, the head rock back on. Gavin Hill, he did well. Almost got through the tackle of Sailor. And the Warriors have used up five tackles. They're still 15 metres inside their own half. That's Alexander with a kick. One bounce to O'Neill. And O'Neill now goes back straight up past Logan Edwards. Taken by Eru and Rapati on the 40-metre line. And as you made the point earlier, Peter, they're quick to reorganise. Again, Kerrod Walters back to dummy half. Langer spread it wide then for Renoff. Picked up by Blackmore. The Bronco juggling effort from Allen. To then control the football. Eight metres short of halfway. Hancock. The crowd was just about in a frenzy when the Broncos crossed for their fourth try there. Beginning to wonder why we've gone a few minutes without another one. Kerrod Walters out of dummy half. This could be it. Kevin Walters. Madison on the outside. It's called back for a forward pass. Well, it should have been a try. Some simple work up again. The middle of the ruck. The Walters brothers combining. 
Kerrod Wallace so quick to seize on any opportunity. And then just looking back to the right-hand side through the timing out of Kevin Wallace. In fact, he could, if he could have held it back, Michael Hancock was there as well. Pass to Madison going forward. Would have been under the sticks. Another six points. That would be an embarrassing scoreline as far as the Warriors are concerned. Jones spins it back to the right side of the scrum. Namu, Blackmore away from Can, who broke well from the scrum. And Blackmore wrapped up 12 inside his own half. The Warriors would well, be prepared to offload some of their contract money to purchase points at the moment. I just can't remember them being inside the Brisbane half as now it's Gavin Hill. Making an inroad into the defence. Andrew G about to come into the action. He'll be fired up. He wants to go on the starting lineup. There's Eru. Makes a 10 metre gain. Then offloads for Alexander. And the Warriors work the ball forward. They're now 25 metres out from the line. Namu dummy there to Edwards. The ball is loose and called a knock on. Look at that one again. That's Eddie Wood claiming that the support player Logan Edwards got a touch. It just seemed that Namu had gone across through it into open space. It's not conclusive, but I'm still doubtful whether Edwards did get a touch on the ball. Gavin Allen off. Great effort from him. And G on for the Broncos, straight into the front row. He's been looking to work something on this right side of the field. It went straight past the hands of Julian O'Neill. It was like a dummy reception. He put out the hands and then pulled them back. Well, he can't from inside his own 20. Taken the cross field that time by Logan Edwards. So Rapati, Kerrod Walters for Langer. Over halfway, numbers again. O'Neill turns him around up to halfway. Inside of Smith. O'Neill takes the tackle, unloads for Madison. Smith is still there. Madison floats it forward a long one. Although Eddie Ward has called the first unload as forward. Almost too many players there. Alan Langer spotting the chance on this side of the field. Julian O'Neill finds Terry Madison. I thought that ball was OK. There's no doubt this other one is miles forward, but the referee, Eddie Ward, said that the Madison pass was the first infringement. That's an a fair deal of bother after that push downfield. Could have been a tragic decision by Eddie Ward. The pass was in no way forward the first one. The last one certainly was. Madison's back on his feet. And Dean Bell taken and rocked back in the tackle of Andrew G. He went around the chest to make the tackle. Logan Edwards. The big league program listed as a reserve for reserve heading into today's match. Getting the call up with Phil Blake off the fresh reserves bench. Gavin Hill try to work a run around. Intercept. Well, you can put it down for try five. Smith inside the 20. There's four chases. Smith has enough to get to the tape and score. Darren Smith, everything going the right way for the Broncos. Five tries now and 26 nil. Great urgency in this Brisbane side. And the problem for the Auckland team is that they've got to take chances, keep the ball alive at all costs. Intercept plucked out after the run around. Darren Smith, he's, he's lost a little bit of pace. You can see the four Auckland players converging, but he had enough start. The distance wasn't that far for him to travel. Brisbane players really getting up in the faces of the Auckland team in defence. And that can lead to interceptions. And Darren Smith, who's been very good next to Renoff in the centres, he gets one while his partner's got three. Plenty of strike power in the centres for the Broncos this afternoon. Aaron Smith, former Bulldog, linked up with the Broncos this year. For one point, looked like he was headed for the Crushers. I think, in fact, he'd signed a letter of intent to play with the Crushers. And then the Broncos entered. And he's ended up with Brisbane. And he's ended up with a spot in the finals. And sure to play more than a part back in 1994 with the Bulldogs. It's taken him a while to settle into the Brisbane camp. The thing that's impressed me in the last couple of games that I have seen him is his defensive qualities have, have really been very good the last couple of weeks. Obviously, ran off the higher profile of the two. The player that tends to run in the tries, but Smith does a lot of good defensive work, which helps Renoff 
Probably goes undetected by a lot of people, but not his teammates. O'Neill a little wider then with this kick. He's 12 metres in from touch. His points tally for the season includes eight four-pointers. 74% success rate for Julian O'Neill. He's still taking plenty of time with a kick, and why not? That one is perfect. Another two to O'Neill and another two to the Brisbane Broncos. It's 28-0. Warriors like a fast deflating balloon at the moment. We'll walk back to halfway, getting a little slower each time. Alexander, far too many kickoffs for his liking in this first half of football. As there's a knock on from the kickoff. Hasn't been too many errors, but Andrew G's just made a big blunder. A double B. It's about staying very low. She would have been better off not trying to get it with the hands, just allowing it to hit the legs. This is new ground for the Broncos, or rather for the Warriors, or so too for the defence, and they've dropped it, would you believe, but a penalty from Eddie Ward, breaking too soon from the scrum. Quick tap from Jones. The Broncos were offside on the outside. They could have a player in the bin if Ward wanted to reward the penalty. And there's a big tackle picked up, almost dangerous, on Gene Namu. Allen can in there, but the Warriors, they just have to keep on attacking bits. Taking that time by Alan Langer. On the 10-metre line, out from the Broncos' line is now Hill. Bucked away from one. Julian O'Neill stung as he tried to make that tackle. The Warriors with Kearney. Then it goes to Dean Bell, and this is driving defence from the Broncos. That time, Kevin Walters. Error with dummy half. He goes himself. Can't get the ball down, or Kenny. He? He's going to award it, Eddie Ward, is he? No. In fact, he's ruled a knock on. Well, the thing that will please Wayne Bennett most about this first half performance has been the defence. He knows his team can score tries. They've driven. Very powerfully in defence, Eru trying to stay low, grounds the ball just short of the line and it comes loose. And in goal judge making that decision for Eddie Ward. That goes with his scrum win. After almost conceding the first try of the day. Lee Khan wrapped up there, three defenders. I think they'd be pretty happy with a 28-0 scoreline. Darren Smith, he's 15 out from the line. Well, you can be certain they wouldn't have expected to be leading by 28 points at half-time, which may well be the case with the seconds to go in this first half. As I said, Wayne Bennett, very, very happy with the defensive qualities of his team out there in this first half. That's what wins grand finals. It's not what you can do with the football. It's a team that can stop them most effectively. Langer. Kern was almost up in the line. It's turned him right around. Namu gets back to it inside the 20. And Khan leads the chase and makes the tackle with Kevin Walters. And the Warriors a little slow getting back onside. Kerwin, then for a party, away for Hoppy. Hoppy half got through the attempted tackle there of Lazarus. No damage done as far as the Broncos' defensive line was concerned. Can made the second tackle. There's a bouncing ball for Blackmore. Blackmore and Hancock. He gets away from Hancock, Blackmore. Then offloads on the outside, and the Warriors are away with Kerwin. Kerwin up over the 40 on his opposite wing. Tries to throw the pass inside. And I think the crowd tells the story. The Broncos are back with it. But again, it's a situation where he's got to come up with a miracle pass to try and get something going as Brisbane immediately go wide. Langer finding Walters up the middle of the ruck, who finds his brother, Kerrod Wallace, now Saylor. Keep going, Sterlo. The Ipswich connection finish off with Wendell Saylor inside the 40. That is sensational rugby league. There's Kerrod Walters. And there's still trouble here. Langer, short pass. They're now up to the 30, the Brisbane Broncos. They're not happy with 28-0. They won't more, want more before half-time. Langer, long ball, cut out two to G. Then away for Renoff. He's already got a hat-trick. Back it comes now, O'Neill. He's up to the 10-metre line and no support there. He held the pass when tackled by Namu. They're nine metres out. Langer, 
He tries the little grubber. It ricochets off a couple of legs and ends up a knock-on against the Broncos. A game of soccer there. He's going to work towards the Auckland Warriors. I've got to give a big rap to John Kerwin. He made the bust before Brisbane came up with the football and Langer was forced to kick on the last, on the opposite side to where he's actually playing. This is his run. He is the left winger for the Warriors. And despite this pass at the end of it, he did a great job to get across the other side of the field and be a part of that bust. In the meantime, the Warriors winning that scrum. Still having to... Worked the ball away from inside their own 20. Bell did well that time. Now with a Jones. It's up by Can. Gee, he's performed well in this first half. He's back in form. Another mistake from the Warriors. Well, Betts gave himself up and then was told to play on. He conceded. He had the cue on the rack. <laughs> it appears as though the ball was propelled towards his opponent's goal line. Well, it wasn't Betts who made the mistake as Jones just trying to get something going. Glenn Lazarus sweeping in behind finds Kevin Walters. Popping up everywhere. The Broncos coming up to half time. They kick over the top. Namu has it covered, or does he? He knocks it back into the in goal area. I thought he'd be happy to take the tackle, but he sees some sort of chance to make some ground. Namu, the half time hooter has sounded. They spread the ball wide for Blackmore. Blackmore throws it inside. Oh, it could have been a tragic end of the half. Well, they'll just about get a standing ovation from the 50,000 crowd here, the Broncos. A rare half indeed. They go to the break. We go to a break with the Broncos leading the Warriors 28 points to nil. Welcome back to ANZ Stadium. The second half now underway with Julian O'Neill. And the Warriors, heaven knows what they could say in the rooms at half time. Watching their hopes go astray in their debut year in the Winfield Cup at 28 points to nil. I'm sure John Laney's had plenty to say, Andrew. Line breaks going against his side, 8-2. And a worse statistic, the missed tackles. I don't think I've seen a side miss 21 tackles in one half of football this year, let alone a game of this importance. And the Warriors with the ball with Betts. He's tackled eight metres short of halfway. And Alexander with his kick away. He had a number of his teammates offside well in front of him. And O'Neill, well, that was almost a danger play. It hit the thigh and then headed towards the sideline. And in turn, he's wrapped up by Hoppy. Looking for best players just in this Warriors side. I thought the two wingers had pretty good halves, Kerwin and Hoppy. Under a fair deal of pressure from their inside men. There's now Kerrod Walters for Kevin. Fed on then for Andrew G. There's a lot of extra responsibility taken on by the wingers because there was so much possession against them when they did get the ball. A lot of the forwards were very tired and not getting back, so the back line did come in to take some pressure off. And Kerwin and Hoppy did a great job in that regard. A few better players than this bloke playing the ball. Alan Can. Exceptional game for the Broncos. O'Neill with this kick. He's been finding space all day, and again... Namu was under the impression it was probably headed for the flank. It ended up right over his shoulder. Long ball there away for Kerwin. Nice left arm fend to get away from Khan. Khan comes again, and Langer is around the ankles. And the Warriors, we seem to be saying it many times today, hemmed inside their own 20. At that time, Madison came over the top. So Madison playing his last game here at ANZ Stadium. Another in reserve grade. At his last game today, Paul Hoff. And he was given a tremendous send-off. As the drop ball comes the way of Gavin Hill, an error from the Warriors, but no to Paul Hoff. He's served the Broncos well in his time here. It's this drop ball. Much to it, really. The scrum win. A messy old scrum, this one. It's been spun around, and I think the Warriors have come up with it. So a rare scrum win against the feed. Love it any other time than 28-0, though. There's now Logan Edwards. Almost slipped a pass away on the outside. Rapati overran the ball. Well, he is now with Kearney. He ran into Walters and put to ground and has lost it. And the Broncos, have they got it? Referee Eddie Ward rules yes. So a turnover early in the tackle count again from the Warriors. And the Broncos, right side of the ruck, it's Wendell Saylor. It will stutter when he got the ball. He's 28 metres out from the line. They have five tries next to their name already. Gee, that time tackled. 
23 metres out from the line. Kept going again. Madison left and right. He's taken the ground. 15 out from the line. Alexander was forced to come over the top. Very quick play. The ball from Madison. Lazarus with that platform made another 10. They're now five out from the line and spread out to the right. That's the way it goes. Langer. The alarm bells are ringing. O'Neill almost threw the tackle of Rapati. And wrapped up on the last tackle. Will the Broncos go to the air? Hancock wants it on his wing. Langer kicks across that way. Hancock is charging in. Hoppy and Hancock. Oh, the Broncos! Brenner! That's try number four. He's beaten Hancock to the football. We must have watched Matt Rogers on Friday night at Marathon Stadium. It's very rare that you get players scoring four tries in a game. Steve Renoff has been the second this weekend. I just wonder whether Hoppy was pushed out of the play there. I think it's a penalty against Michael Hancock myself. But the acrobatics of Steve Renoff were absolutely marvellous. Kick was a good one in the field of play. I'm sure that Hoppy got pushed out by his opposing winger. Steve Renoff didn't mind. Knocked the ball forward, dived, caught it before it touched the ground. Number four, 15 for the Steve Renoff season. And that is the fourth time in his first great career that he scored four tries for the Broncos, and that equals his own club record. 91 against North Sydney, 93 against the Bulldogs, and 94 against the Tigers. And now he adds the Warriors to that list. And I guess now he chases five or six, and who's to say he won't get there? Many sides, the Canberra team. The Sharks that all be looking at this performance today by the Brisbane Broncos who have hit form right at the right time. Some fires for the day for Julian O'Neill. This kick he has. 13 in from touch, just inside the 20. Away it goes from O'Neill, and there's another one. He just keeps going the way of the Broncos. The fans are loving it, and it's 34 nil. So Jones, the halfback for this Warriors side, as Hoppy now in possession. Jones, one of the leading contenders for Rookie of the Year. Penalty offside from the scrum. Warriors want to get it going now with Alexander. Almost kicked it out of his reach. Can he get on the outside of Khan? He's turned Khan around again, and then Khan oh, drags him in to make the tackle on Alexander. Alexander wasn't happy with some of the treatment he received. And now a drop ball. And that sort of sums it up. They can't force the knock on. Namu it was that time. It's as if it was in slow motion. The Broncos will say thank you. Tempers straight out there now. John Kerwin through a straight punch that time at Darren Smith in back play. It must be very frustrating for the Warriors coming up with such an inept performance. In the back of their minds, I guess they're wondering how North Sydney are going at Seagulls as Gavin Allen makes a good charge. A couple of tackles left up their sleeve. They've got options both sides. And Langer. They've almost thought about the cutout ball. Then the quick hands. Madison O'Neill. Hancock comes back in field and then goes for the corner and scores. Well, they've had the entree. They've had the main course. Now they're into dessert. They are loving this. 38 points to nil. Hancock, six tries in three weeks. Great finishing from Michael Hancock. That was the mistake that gave the Broncos the ball. But Steve Renoff has done everything this afternoon. He scored four tries, a couple of blockbusting tackles. Look at the hands here as he takes the ball now and offloads in the one movement. That allows Hancock outside Hoppy. Stacey Jones misses the tackle. Great try. Not a lot of space to work in, but it was the ability of Steve Renoff to combine with Julian O'Neill and catch and pass in the one movement. Not many people are going to stop Hancock from 10 metres out on the fly. Saw that try tally for the season, 14 for the year. And now we're looking at stats for the Warriors, what would be a very unhappy end of the season for them as far as their biggest loss in their debut year. At the moment, it stands at 38 points. It's North Sydney way back in round four, 48 to 10. And the margin right now is 38. So Michael Hancock 
man that has started in all 22 matches this year. And he's had some good seasons. I don't know whether he's played any better than this year. And the side hasn't been going all that well in a difficult patch they had before this latest winning streak. He was still a standout performer. Neil then with his toughest kick of the day. Just a metre in from the sideline, looking to add to his own tally. Get to the 40-point mark. O'Neill strikes it again sweetly. This one headed for the black dot, just falls in front of it. Interesting change in the Broncos lineup. Kerrod Waters goes from the field, and young Darren Lockyer comes on. So reshuffle in the front row. And the Broncos in turn are 30 metres out from the Warriors line and leading by 38 points to nil. And looking better and better and better as Langer away to Lockyer. He throws the cutout ball to no one and over the sideline. A dubious start to his call into this match. What a good move from Wayne Bennett to reward Darren Lockyer for what he's done for the team the last couple of weeks. And I'd imagine he could be a pretty strong force for them during their quarterfinal run. And a player that you wouldn't mind bringing off the bench. The more pressure situations he can be put in, the better for him. Jerry Madison it is, who's gone to hooker for this scrum. And Kevin Walters into lock. Lock here at 5'8". It's Alexander. Some nice passing across to Blackmore. And again, the defence has answered all challenges. That time, Julian O'Neill, Rapati. Away from two, stood in the tackle, back for Alexander. He's dancing around like he's on a lazy Susan at a Chinese restaurant there. He was spun around. And he's tackled 10 metres inside his own half. That's made me hungry, I must admit. <laughs> well, have the San Choy bow, thanks. There's Sideru inside the Broncos half now. The Warriors, can they get points on the board? It comes across that time for Namu. Oh, he ducked under a tackle there, fell awkwardly as he approached Andrew G. And in fact, it's a Broncos player who's come off worse. That was Gavin Allen. The Warriors keep it going with Blackmore. He fends off one, then to Kerwin. The defence on the far side from Khan is outstanding. He wrapped up two. The Warriors still alive with Stacey Jones. Back they go to the 40. Well, surely, can they keep the ball alive? They have, and it comes back the way of the Broncos. And he climbs. For Madison to dive on the football. Plenty of passing, but they were losing ground. There's O'Neill then. Across to Renoff. Renoff's put it down. Well, First this year, yes. And still a great sign for the Broncos this late in the game. Getting that back line fine-tuned, ready to run the football whenever possible. Renoff just taking his eye off the ball. with this scrum feed of course this just leading up to what is a very very big weekend coming up next weekend on the nine wide world of sports six matches will be covering all the quarterfinals the president's cup grand final on friday and the commonwealth bank cup final live on saturday so six matches that you can enjoy as the warriors stay on the attack thinks they won't be a part of it as rapati offloaded Standing in the tackle is Edwards. Over the top came Darren Smith. Gets a piggyback. It takes four of them to get him to ground. Andrew G was called in to finish off the tackle. They're 15 out from the line, though. Kearney, he threw it back there for Platt. Platt now 10 metres out from the line. Two-man tackle again from the Broncos. Pride in their defensive line. Keep them scoreless. Eru, he was ridden to ground there. By Terry Madison. This is the last play. Away they go from dummy half. Forced to crossfield to Amavave. Almost out of the ground. Kerwin tries the high ball again. Why not? It's coming down well and Renoff just cleans up easy. So cool. And back to the 20 for the Broncos. And look at the urgency in the Brisbane side. The quick tap start. Kevin Walters told Michael Hancock to stop, which he did, and then get threw him the football. Steve Renoff, they're happy with four tries. Off he goes. The Broncos, and there's a drop ball. A few mistakes just creeping in. Lazarus that time. Disgusted with that one. Mm -hmm. 
Back in possession on the 30. In the blind side of the scrum, Blackmore headed for the sideline. Hancock rounds him up. Alan Cam, the player who came on for Renoff as Hockey comes back in field. No ground made that time as Hancock came up with a double. Eru, Alexander, across for Namu, straight through the hands. Eddie Ward's his play on. And the Warriors with it centre field. He's had some trouble with his hands today. Alexander, cut out ball, Rapati showed it, then came back in field. Wrapped up on the 30. At 38 points to nil, the Warriors with Kearney. Taken high in the tackle that time by Cam. No drama with the tackle. Allen was the assist. Last tackle for the Warriors. They've made only 10 metres in this set of six. Crossfield kick cleaned up by Lockyer. And the Broncos almost a chance to go straight on the attack with numbers on the outside. O'Neill. They go the right. He comes back in field. Turns a couple around. Then taken by Chulma Vave over the top. He's one of the leading tacklers for the Warriors. Starting the ball with G. Forwards for Brisbane really have risen to the occasion in the last few weeks. I thought four to six weeks ago that they were long odds to win the Premiership because their forwards weren't going well enough. But they've turned that around. Glenn Lazarus has been close to the best player in the field in this game. Madison playing great football. Now Ken and G are doing good work. The result on the last tackle there for the Broncos. Knocked down by Sid Eru. So it'll be a scrum feed the way of the Broncos. Just short of halfway. Here it is again. Langer with the ball. Palm down by Eru. The stats for Lazarus. 17 hit-ups. Continuation of his good form. Langer. Kevin Walters from this scrum. Lockyer almost on the outside. He's away. He has got pace. Lockyer. The pursuit is Kerwin. He gets the pass away. The Broncos on the attack. Smith ridden to ground there by, Nart, by Alexander. Just 11 metres out from the line. They're still on the attack. They should score here. Langer turned it back inside. Walters stood in the tackle over the head of Lockyer. Then it comes back. The Broncos stay on the attack. Can they get a try out of it with Alan Can wrapped up by Alexander? Ward had a half a dozen chances to rule on some offside play as far as the Warriors were concerned. He plays the advantage for Allen. Allen offloads. Alfie Langer for the try line. He gets there and scores. Alfie Langer, the captain, and his comeback match from a broken hand has scored, and the Broncos are into the 40s. And pretty good advantage played by Eddie Ward. As you pointed out, he could have pulled up play on the previous ruck. Darren Lockyer. He has got good speed. In fact, he's got all the skill straight out of the Namu tackle. John Kerwin and Greg Alexander chased well. Alexander coming up with the tackle on Darren Smith. And then Gavin Allen creating a little bit of a hole for Alan Langer, and that's all he needs. Looked as though he'd been wrapped up by Sean Hoppy. Spins out of the tackle. And goes through the tackle of Platt to score next to the posts. Julian O'Neill. Had a fine game, getting involved. Gavin Allen, nice little offload. And Langer, it's probably no coincidence that their form has been that good in this game with him coming back into the team. Langer in that first round match that does seem a long, long time ago. He scored two tries on that first night against the Warriors. And that 25 22 victory. And that turned the game. Remember, he did it all by himself almost in the second half. kicker Terry Madison and presentation for Terry at the end of this match and there it is sweetly struck Terry Madison puts two on the score sheet and the Broncos over the Warriors here at ANZ 44 nil Short kickoff from the Auckland Warriors. Play back underway. A scrappy end of the short kickoff. It comes back the way of Allen, and he's able to offload then to Lockyer. He's blessed with speed, this young player, Darren Lockyer. To that break leading up to the previous try. And they keep on going. Andrew G that time. Madison away to Lazarus. Hit up number 18. And again, he attracts the three defenders in there. 
And again, a pretty good play. The ball, that allowed Michael Hancock seven, eight metres before he came to the defensive line. It's just been a superb performance from Lazarus. He worked in the joint down out there. And teammates are capitalising. Chua Mavavi cleans up the little attempted kick from Alan Langer. 40 out centre field. Warriors 10 inside their own half. Kerwin. Gets the hit-ups for the wingers. He's, he's beaten the count for a few of his forward teammates. And the Warriors now inside Broncos territory. Khan and Smith make that tackle. I believe the scoreline 44-0. Kearney now with it. In what could have been the biggest day for their short history. He's become, on record, their worst. It comes across the line, Namu, then for Blackmore, now there's space, Blackmore, he'll just go for the corner, throws it inside to Namu, the Warriors have a try, they've waited long enough for it, plenty of fans here at ANZ, Namu scores it. That's the kind of football we've expected from the Auckland Warriors, they've scored over 500 points this year, so their attacking ability is, is very good, it's been nullified by the Brisbane team this afternoon until Richie Blackmore Found a gap out wide, got outside Darren Lockyer, Michael Hancock staying with his winger in Hoppy. And on the inside, Gene Namu, along with Hoppy, could have scored the try. But the number one improves the position to put on their first points, and it's been a long time coming. They've got a lot of strike power out wide, and Richie Blackmore has had a good year since joining the Warriors. Big man with pace, and the selective pass back inside was a good one. Hoppy was desperate to get the ball. He's well up there in the race for leading try scorer. And Hoppy heading into this weekend. 19 tries level with Hopawati and Menzies. And no four pointer so far for him. And he was calling for the ball, hoping to get the attention of Blackmore. Namu has only his first kick of the day. 8% success rate for the year. He should get this one. It's at least a 44-6. He's done that. It's a long way to go, and I don't think they've got enough time. They need the rest of the week. It's 44-6. The Broncos leading Auckland. It's been only their second kickoff for the day. It'll be taken by Willie Kahn. Nice touch too with the Broncos. Paul Hoff now on the field. Well, here's a rare penalty. Eddie Waters ruled the players in front of the kicker from the restart. We could see a million of those every weekend. Teams have really forgotten to stay behind the kicker in the Winfield Cup competition as Namu takes the quick restart. A few changes made from both teams. Ocasini and Doreen on for the Auckland side. And Paul Hoff on a fullback for Julian O'Neill. And he's forced to make that tackle. Knocks the ball down six again to the Warriors. For a party. Able to keep the ball alive for Kerwin. But now Eddie Ward has ruled a knock on. It'll be a feed going the way of the Warriors. I thought he could have probably... He'd obviously blown the whistle, but he could have played the advantage in hindsight, of course. With the Warriors back in possession. <laughs> The Warriors should win this scrum 30 metres out. They do. And now it's Alexander. Alexander for Namu. Namu then brings the replacement player, Mike Doreen, into the action. And straight away wrapped up by another one of the replacements, Lockyer Dean, Mel Blindside. Well, this is his last game in the Winfield Cup. And hit hard by Michael Hancock. Hoppy at dummy half. Away then to Chua Mavave. Headed back to the centre of the ruck. And the reception party was led by Andrew G. Ocasini, Eru, then Kearney. Kearney tries to bump away. That was a good ball. Kerwin on the bounce. Hard to stop five metres out. Still wrestling with Darren Smith and tackled. So the Warriors trying to come home as best they can at 44 points to six. An overlap here on the right-hand side. Chua Mavave put the head down and took the tackle of Lockyer. Didn't get to his feet to play it. Alexander on the last, throws the long ball. Eru straightens the attack up, begging it for an intercept. Kerwin then gets it, flicks it back for Namu. Namu wrapped up over the top. And Lazarus is the man there. Yeah, what about that? Lazarus out there with Darren Smith, the try-saver on the inside. The front rower has enormous mobility. 
Nice little flick pass here from John Kerwin back to Gene Namu. Nothing happening out wide. They can drop the ball. And you can't write the Warriors off as yet as top eight players as Hoff gets involved. We don't know at the moment the Norse Gold Coast result. But this is not the kind of performance if the Warriors did sneak into the top eight that they'd be looking to take in. Shell shocked. It'd be tough to win a semi final or a quarter final after this performance. Langer through that inside pass. So the Broncos will have a quarter final in Brisbane next Saturday night. Suncorp Stadium will be the venue. You'll see it here on Channel 9 as Allen has tackled just short of halfway. The contest that'll be next Saturday night. Broncos and the Raiders. Sailor. Here's the kick over the top. Doesn't get a clear passage on the ball. Kicked it out of the hands of Doreen. And Namu in turn has got away from Lockyer. Now looking for space, Namu throws the pass to Rapati. Rapati hears a call from the inside, it's Kearney. Kearney up to halfway, tackled front on by Cairn. Over the top, Andrew G. The Warriors trying everything in the passing. Making a whole lot of metres is Platt. Oh, good front on hit again. That was Sailor that time. Platt did well to offload. Even better now, the follow-up from Eru. Little dummy as he got to O'Neill. Threw a flat pass then to Hoppy. Hoppy on the 30-metre line and crash, he goes down. Madison looked like he was hurt in the tackle and knocked out of the way by Lockyer. The attack stays on now. Jones to Alexander, long pass to Rapati. Flick for Doreen. Doreen, did he knock it on? He has. And the Broncos will have the feed just outside the 20. But they are certainly throwing some quick passing now. But all too late. Rapati was the man who stood in that tackle. The flick pass and Doreen just put it down. He tries to win this for the Brisbane Broncos. It was Kevin Walters. 38 nil it was at half time. And despite the fact that Brisbane have scored plenty of their tries out wide, it's, it's been in the middle of the ruck where they've set up the win. There's some strong defence there on Paul Hoff from Ocasini. It's just been a barnstorming performance from their forwards. Andrew G's been very good since going out. Lazarus for mine has been the best player on the field. Ranoff couldn't have done any more, but Lazarus really has just been a colossus in the middle. And now Alan Cairn has found plenty of form as well. Great flick passing to Kevin Walters. Kevin Walters up over the 40. He's going to have a go himself, Kevin Walters. Wrestling with Namu. Then the support comes from Khan. Khan for the corner. Loops the pass back inside and cleaned up by Tony Chumavavi who got back there, but the linesman is in and one would suspect it ha this has to be a penalty to the Brisbane Broncos. Yes, it looked as though there was one of the Broncos players, support players taken out. The man immediately inside, Willie Khan. Lovely work from Alan Cairn, the little flick pass, attracting two defenders, they couldn't wrap the ball up. Kevin Walters, a little goose step there, he takes on Gene Namu, gets a good ball away. As Brisbane Take the tap and Glenn Lazarus taken low by Dean Bell. The tackle from Bell, 10 metres out from the line. Langer stands up and calls Allen through. Allen, oh, he throws the pass and there's an intercept for Dean Bell. He just turned around and popped it straight into the hands of Bell. And he's a letdown for the fans. They wanted 50. They wanted a try right under this black dot. So 44 points to six as Doreen stumbles. 15 out from the line. The Warriors are still ruining that two points they lost during the year against Western Suburbs. Is now Hoppy on the outside, wrapped up by Hancock. Gee, it's been a good battle on the flanks. Khan and Kerwin, Hoppy and Hancock. It's Kearney now. Away then for Namu. Namu for Jones. Jones in traffic. Tries to get through the tackle of Allen and Cart. And the Warriors, 15 inside their own half. Eru away for Alexander. It's kept going for Platt out in the centres. And they've used up five of their six tackles now. And will look to try the short kick over the top. Jones, he kicks deep. It's over the head of Paul Hoff, which isn't easy. He's all the way back to his own goal line and now inside the in-goal area. So Paul Hoff, he stretches out. He's got a 10-metre stride and he's wrapped up just over the 10-metre line. And the Broncos with a chance to attack on the left, but it's a slow play, the ball. There's Walters. Then the pass away to Lockyer. He gets it over the 20. Wrapped up that time by Kearney. 
Madison this time for Willie Kahn. Kahn stepping, a countdown coming from the fans, that crowd 54,645. The Broncos in no hurry for one last play, the ball, Madison, Langer, he tries a little kick over the top, leads the chase, now is Saylor, Saylor searching for support, he throws the pass, it was knocked down, kicked in the touch by Tony Chilmabave, that's going out with style, so has to be a penalty for offside, why not bid him as well? Get him off to the sheds early. We'll wait for the restart. What will the Broncos do? The game is all over at 44 points to six. They want to prolong this with a kick for the line. No, Langer takes the tap, then offloads to Walters. Walters to Sailor. Sailor is inside the Warriors' half. Surely this match has to end. Hancock, he gets away from one, throws it inside. Knock on now, turnover for Hoppy. Hoppy's through a tackle. He's up to the 40, turns the ball inside to Doreen. Thank heavens it's over. The longest full time we've ever had. But it is full time, probably, for the Auckland Warriors. Brisbane has defeated the Warriors by 44 points to six. They're all ready for the finals and watch them go, the Brisbane Broncos.